um, on a lot of it because, I mean, you can't go up there and you can't say, hey, show me your ID. Because right. if they are a, a vet, you're like just kicking someone in the in the, the man business and, you know, yeah. it, it's embarrassing. It's, you know, for me, for me, it's a, it's a tough path to walk even making a decision on it because, again, you don't know their story. You don't know why they're out there. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to try to pull somebody's card on that. I would hope that it, because there's so much stolen valor for one. So you never know if they're, they're saying they're a vet and they really are, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, I think if things were better in that community, as far as the care form and, and what the VA, if it didn't take so long to get the support from the VA, then I think that would be less of an issue. Right. I, I don't understand though how, I mean, we, there's a ton of, a ton of vets and I mean, almost all of them, you can't, you can't go to war. You can't, you can't serve this, your country and be put into a war and not have some sort of issue. I mean, your body is beat up. Your mind is beat up. Something, something's going on, whether it's PTSD or, or, or whatever. I, I, I don't understand why there's not just, it's not inundated. <sighs> if, if it's, I mean, I understand that it's, it's bad. VA is way too, takes way too long to get help. Mm-hmm. The help you do get isn't enough. And and things like that, but but what, where are all the other guys? Where where is everybody else at? How come there's only a handful of them standing out on a corner with a sign claiming to be homeless? You know what I'm saying? Well, you got to look at the mindset too of a lot of folks that have been in. You know, you we go to the we go to the doctor and they're like, oh, here's some Ostrin, ice and heat. You're fine. Go back to work. Right. You know, and, that, and that's what a lot of us have dealt with. I mean, I've had that before for stuff when I was legitimately hurt, and you know, I'm like, okay. I got Motrin. Great. What do I, you know, what's next? Right. Oh, no, that's it. You know, so a lot of guys just cover it up because if it is something that's bad enough and they can med board you and kick you out, they don't know anything else. Yeah. So they're like, nope, I'm just going to brush this under the rug. I'm going to go about my business and retire in 20 years. Yeah. You know? Well, and I mean, and there, I mean, this is like a huge, a way bigger problem than what we're just, you know, starting out and talking about on the corner and stuff. But like you said, they cover it up. And I, I don't, I'm never going to be one that talks bad about our military because first of all, I never did serve. So who am I to, to say otherwise? Um, but I do know like a lot of my family was in the air force. Um, my dad was in the army <clears throat> and anyway, but now, I mean, like you said, it's not ibuprofen that they're feeding them. They're feeding them Vicodin. He's been on the Vicodin for 10 years. Yeah, it's insane that 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 they're the opiates that they prescribe and get people addicted to is just absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. It's unreal. I watched I watched my mom and she had legitimate pain. She has a degenerative disc disease, which mm-hmm. I have too, but she's got a way more severe case cervical. It's all the way up and down her spine. She's had literally surgeries where they've tried to fuse discs. They've done everything to her. Uh, they've burned the nerves. They've put in morphine pumps into her body that have leads running up into each, you know, vertebrae. And it just, it drips. It's like a constant drip. Mm-hmm. I, she was so addicted to morphine that it was ridiculous. Yeah, and, I remember and, saying that. Yeah. And I had to watch her try to come off of that. And thank God she is now completely 100% free of, of, of morphine. But that took years to do mm-hmm. years. Yeah. And when she first tried to do it, it was like watching a heroin addict that you, you couldn't give any more drugs to. I mean, her, she was angry. She was in pain. She thought she was going to die. She was, I mean, the personality change was just insane to me. And how can you put anybody on something like that is, is beyond me. It, it's crazy. We, so. we got Gabe peeking through trying to get some attention. <laughs> What's going on, Gabe? So if you got a question, you got, you got to wait a couple minutes. But we got to continue our conversation. <laughs> so one of the things that, like, I grew up doing, um, my parents, anytime they would see um, homeless people, and this is in Texas, and obviously back then it was kind of a little bit different. So when you see a family on the corner, sure, normally it's because they're just in a really bad way. Right. Um, and my dad, like, we would pull over and he, he would buy them you know, um, bottles, blankets, anything that they would possibly need. And then we, you know, transport them to another place. And that was back when like it, it, you saw someone and you wanted to help and you, and it was for the right reasons. Well, because back then, if you were, if you were to the point where you had to actually beg, 
Mm-hmm. That was serious. I mean, right. that, that it wasn't just a, an, another option back then. That was last resort. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And there was a sense of pride and a sense of dignity, I think, back in that day that was completely lost somewhere in this last <laughs> generation of, of whatever. But Well, uh, maybe, maybe that's what we're missing now. I mean, you know, a lot of veterans are on the corners. Um, I, I would, if I had to guess, there'd be more veterans on the corner saying they're vets than there are other people. Um, I would hope so. You, you see it all the time. And I, I guess it could go back to the fact that, okay, they're not seeing the VA. They're not doing all that stuff. So, you know, that's their only source of extra income, um, you know, to be able to get marijuana, to, you know, feed their body, whatever they're trying to get. Um, so I, I could see that happening. But have you ever, and because we're kind of like forgetting about Lucian here, um, has your dad ever taken you out and like you guys helped someone on the corner? No. No? So he, he's just a, just a <laughs> cold, a cold-hearted, cold-hearted man. Yeah. Well, no, and, and the reason why is because, uh, you know, it's my belief that there, there, it, there are programs for people that need – and most of the time what I see – isn't someone that is a veteran that, you know, is, is out there in a wheelchair or, you know, has a missing limb or whatever. And I know that there's a lot, a lot of vets that have injuries, whether it, and PTSD and, and mental issues and, and things like that, where they can't work that would still end up going out there, but it's so hard to differentiate now. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm not going to give money to someone, my hard earned money to someone that's just standing there with a cardboard sign when there's a job that you can get right across the street holding mm-hmm. a cardboard sign and get a paycheck for it. Yeah. You know no, I, mean? I agree. So it, it's not, it's not something that I want to teach Lucian as an option. Now, as far as being, you know, doing any philanthropy or anything like that, I mean, we, we donate clothes and, and things like that, or, toys. you know, yeah, or toys or, or things like that. But I'm not just going to hand someone who's just begging for money, you know, Stand, who's been standing out there? They're not out there in the cold. Now, if someone's out there in the freezing cold and they're you know wrapped up in a blanket. That's somebody I, I would help. That's somebody no. I would I would go over to. But it, it seems like they're always fair weather. You know what I mean? For the most part, know. out here. Well, you know, and what I see that I actually I will stop. I, like I've bought food for guys. Yeah, I saw a guy. Uh, my kids were at a baseball game. I had just dropped them off, and I had ran up to grab some food. And the guy was standing on the corner saying he was looking for work. You know, like he, he said, his sign said, you know, I'll do, you know, any job, uh, just need to make some money. Right. So, you know what? I grabbed him, I grabbed him some food while I, I think I had ran by McDonald's and I said, Hey brother, I don't have any work for you, but I know you're going to need your energy for, you know, while sure. you're out there working. So here you go. And he mm-hmm. was very appreciative of it, you yeah. know? And it's cause you know, you'll run into some people that you'll give them food when they're standing there with a sign for money. And, and I've had and this happen to me off. and it pisses them off. I'm like, yeah. well, screw you then. Yeah. I, I had a guy yeah. throw a hot dog. <laughs> well, and I, and, 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 and speaking of hot dogs, I used to, I used to own two of the hot dog stands that were downtown. Oh, really? Yeah. And I actually worked one. I mean, I, I was in I front worked, of the courthouse. Uh, I, or worked, what? I worked. No, they they get, <laughs> that's kind of like, there's a war going on down there. There's a hot dog war going on downtown. And if you piss somebody off that has a hot dog, stand, I, I literally they will, they'll, somebody will show up, pull up and skid and get off my, I, you have to have your own corner. It's like we're hot dog hookers. We, we, we <laughs> I work this corner. You stay off my corner <laughs> type situation. But no, I used to give, I used to give free food to the, some of the guys that were down there because there was guys that were down there every day. And then you'd work, you'd go down there on a Friday night and they're still outside on the corner. Those are legitimate guys. Mm-hmm. My problem is now is it seems like it's become an option. Mm-hmm. And it's easy to just stand out there and take free money. And you're right. Like there's been times when I've actually asked people, Hey man, if I got some yard work, do you want to come, you know, overall I'll give you, you know, 50 bucks for the day, but I need my yard cleaned up and da da. Oh yeah. Um, I have something planned for, for tomorrow. So, or whatever day you're asking, well, I'll switch it up, man. Yeah. How about the next day? I'm booked up for that too, man, but keep checking with me, you know, <laughs> but, but if I but hand you, here. right. But if I hand you 50 bucks right now, you're good, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I just won't do it. Well, and everybody's part of town. Um, and I, you guys live um, closer together than obviously I do, but, um, on, we're at the shopping center, uh, King Super Shopping Center on, on Powers and um, Stetson Hills. Stetson Hills, yeah. There's there's a group of ladies that fight mm-hmm. for that corner, mm-hmm. and I, I've seen them like they get pissed off. They get dropped off in nice cars, yeah. And they're they're older ladies. Um, one's an African American lady, one's a, a white lady, and um, I saw the white lady jump out, 
and she was pissed, bro. Oh yeah. And she's like, "That's mine. That's my corner." Mm-hmm. And th- this lady just puts her hood on, just dips down low, and sits on this little tiny rock mm-hmm. um, every day. She does the same thing. And then over here on our side, and you know, Gabe's seen it all the time. Um, there's a shell station right on I-25 in Woodman, and right there um, on that corner, um, there's two people. It's a guy and a lady, and she's got a wheelchair, and they always have their dog, dog with them. So the lady sits in the wheelchair. When she gets tired of sitting in the wheelchair, she walks up to the shell station. Oh my god! And she gets warm, and they, they get all kinds of food, and then they walk back down and sit back down in the the thing. Um, it, like I've been in the shell station, and she's just walking around and having the greatest time. And I mean, she, you know, and this is where I lose my 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 big heart for that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's exactly when it happens. And there's a there's a guy that's right. And there's the um, gentleman that sits on the Stetson Hills and Powers Island that used to he started off standing there with this sign that said, uh, uh, I, I think hard times or you know the, mm-hmm. the typical. Uh, cardboard phrases that they put on there now. And then it got to where he was sitting on the island, and then he brought his own chair, and then he had a truck of <laughs> his truck parked over in the parking lot that had, you know, blankets. And then it, now he's out there with a, a cell phone watching videos. Like, he's moving videos. up in the world. Yeah, right. He's, we've, we've, we've brought him up to middle-class status, apparently, and he's up. And, and that's just where I lose my, you know, my, my giving heart when I see people taking advantage of it because – how do you know? You know what I mean? I, I work hard for my money. He's got something special going on. He's an entrepreneur, that's for sure. How do, I, how do you know? You know, It's a self-starter. Especially when you offer him help, like, I'll, okay, I'll bring you to work. Uh, I, there's an excuse, mm-hmm. you know? Have you seen the guy down on uh, Palmer Park in Powers? The sign, it's like... Uh... Something like too old to work oh, and yeah. too ugly to prostitute yeah. or something like that. <laughs> too too honest to lie and too old to work and too ugly to prostitute. Or something, yeah. something like that. Yeah. How do you feel about that whole situation with the people that are out on the corners and stuff like that? Where does your heart sit with that? I feel, oh, I'm like you because you never know. Yeah. And there are so many people these days who do take advantage of that and are just, when we work, when people, not me, but people work so hard for their money, <clears throat> and they're just sitting there waiting. They're not doing anything. They're just sitting there and getting money. Yeah, and see, and I think that the, I think that you can donate instead of just handing them money. Because I mean, honestly, nine times out of ten, they're going to go buy a <laughs> bottle, or they're going to go buy some weed, or they're going to go buy you know whatever. If if you donate to like the soup kitchen or you take the kids down, which I'm probably going to do with Lucian this year and see if Ty wants to do it too. But, um, for Thanksgiving and go down and work, you know, the Thanksgiving dinner and, and duty and crew that stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's things that you can do outside of just handing somebody some money and right. a- enabling them to, to be out there with a sign and, and taking advantage of, you know, the kindness of others. I, I think that there's other ways to do it. So, no, that's, that's I'm right I'm there at. with you. We we gotta we gotta continue with the the doo doo crew idea though, because I think that it take us far. I don't know if people are gonna want to like take food from the doo doo crew. <laughs> that, it might that might make a little. We might just have to call ourselves something else at that point. Let's just go with it. With Come a... get your wieners from the doo doo right. crew. <laughs> We got free wieners. <laughs> you want the doo-doo, you want the doo doo crew serving you food? No, no. <laughs> well, you know we'll have a lot of chili. Some, 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 just, <laughs> oh man! Just we, we got to we, we'll go to like Dick's and buy us a porta potty. You know, just in case shit happens. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no, you get you one, know we got to go there just a little shirts. bit, even though we have a k- couple youngsters in here. Um, you get one of those but, portable. Uh, Camping toilets, and you put the bag in there, and that's what you serve the chili on. Oh, man. <laughs> so bad. We have it on a heating plate. <laughs> so bad. It's, it's just steaming. That's, that's horrible. <laughs> Call it the, the Colorado Spring steamer. <laughs> you see these guys I hang out with. Uh, <laughs> so anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, no, since we were already talking about that, um, like... Homeless thing. Uh, last Christmas, no, two two years ago for Christmas, um, on Christmas Eve, I gave away all my toys. To nice the thing. Honestly, I didn't know how. It, I didn't realize how much I had. Like I had all. I kept one. I kept my machine gun. 
How did it make you feel when you did that? It felt like I didn't need those, really, and that someone else could enjoy them way more than me. Yeah. Did it make you feel good? 